start with Eric Bailey, and then I'll let you guys shoot it. Well, good to see you again, Patty. You too. 2016-2017, uh, back-to-back. Is there any similarities to the message you give this year's team to the 2018 team about him, the, the, the team is targeted, having a lot of expectations? Is there any sim Are these just totally two different teams? I think they're totally different teams, and honestly, I can't remember what I was saying back then. So that's, uh, I, we don't talk about winning um, three P. Those are words that we're not really talking about around here um, because it's premature. It's really about the process, it's the journey, it's all of that. All the work we put in and now just playing it out, I can't tell you how excited they are to play someone else in a different uniform. And so it's just starting off, you know, we're just focusing on weekend per weekend. We're just not going down that, that rabbit hole right now. It just it's it's a scary place to take them, to hear them talk about. So um yeah, I just we're just trying to keep it very day to day and very simple, and not get overwhelmed with looking at rankings and things that don't make absolutely any sense right now. So it's a new team; it's a completely different look. So the similarities are are not as much there as they were in sixteen and seventeen. So it, it's a different approach. Last season was kind of unprecedented. The last two years, really, with all the run rule. Do you enter this year kind of trying to balance pitching innings and such because of what has happened these past two years? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, I, I think our schedule lends to the fact that we're going to be throwing a lot more innings this season. That's my expectation. Um, at times I felt that lack of innings hurt our pitchers. And it rested them, but they missed big opportunities for improvement or handling pressure, things like that. So... I think this is going to look completely different. I think all of our pitchers will have opportunities to get significant innings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Patty, are you, are you thinking four pitchers may pitch, or what, what sort of your expectation? Yeah, I mean, SJ, Garen is going to redshirt, so we have four. We have a lefty um, freshman, Katie Kirsten Deal, who is really throwing well. And so all four of these pitchers can help us significantly, and I'm excited about each one of them in a different way. I think um, Alex Taraco has really thrown very well these last this last week and a half, specifically. Um, Jordy is feeling good, looking good, um, excited to get back and pick up where she left off. And it's been a while since she's felt healthy. And um, I think Nicole May, this is going to be her best season. I feel her improvement. I feel her command on the mound. And KD just gives us that lefty, lefty matchup. So all four are, I'm extremely comfortable with any one of them on the mound at any time. You talk about uh, Jordy and not being uh, you know, healthy for a while. How has how she come through, you know, what she dealt with at the end of last year? What was the process like to come back to that one? Um, slow. Just the summer, the, the idea was to leave the ball in the bag and don't pick it up and no need to. So just let it rest and let's heal. And so, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to keep her grounded because she wants to go, 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 go. We haven't had any kind of problems with the forearm. It seems like she's feeling completely fine. So um, excited to get her opportunities back on the mound healthy. And is she a different pitcher at all uh, now than she was you know, at the end of last year? I don't feel. I think you're going to see the same competitor, the same walking around the mound, that same swag looks exactly the same as it did last year. But last year you talked about managing, not putting too much on Jordan's plate because it was – so tempting to keep her out there. Now that you've talked about working her in left field, batting, all of that, what's that process going to be like for you this year as well to make sure that, again, you're not putting too much on her too early in the season? I, I think she's another level athlete that I am not concerned about. I, she is the strongest kid on our team, probably the fastest on our team. She's, she's pretty phenomenal, the things that she can do away from the mound. So I, I think she wants it. She's begging for opportunity to 
lend more of herself to a chance to win, whether it's on the mound, at the plate, um, in the field. She's been working really hard to make herself an option, and she definitely is. So I, I think she's going to have a lot of fun with that. How do you lose, Aloe? That this lineup looks daunting. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I would say yes. <laughs> uh, it's good. It's good. It's solid. The swings will wow you. Um, and it's throughout. It's throughout. And it's sitting on the bench, and it's waiting for me to call on them. I, that's my biggest issue is um, we, have, we have such a deep bench. How do I make all these athletes feel a part of it and engaged and that's going to be probably the hardest job I have. Um, they, they can swing it. They can lay it down. They can bunt it. Uh, the person that's really impressed me power-wise is Jada Coleman. And you see her as like that soft slapper. She's swinging it. She's swinging it a la T.R.A. Jennings, just big, hard, long shots. And it's just throughout the lineup. And Hanson's swinging well. And I think you need to watch her a bit because she was really hurting and was in and out of the lineup, and that really hurt her. She was kind of down in the dumps, but now it's like a new start and a new beginning, and she's hungry. So there's just a lot of hungry athletes um, that are just really excited to play. You've always been great at putting together a lineup. I think you've been magical at times. So. What's your thoughts early in the season? Oh, the magic to, has to stay in the hat right now. Yeah, you know, I can't. You always, you know, you always <laughs> give us a little something. So you, 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 you were the first to go with the power hitter and get out of the lineup. So. I, I think you, you all could probably predict it, but Jada will be, Jada, Tiara will be one, two, likely Jada, Tiara. Um, and then it's just, Boom, 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 boom after that. And then Boone, <laughs> probably <laughs> at the bottom. Who she, can boom? I mean, you, you watch her swing and foul something off. And uh, I mean, when I'm watching her, I just, I mean, if you're a, someone who loves a good swing, you're going to watch them swing and miss and go, oh, you know, when you're like, oh, oh. And that's what I feel about Riley Boone. And I can go throughout the lineup. I, Quincy Lil, Q, Quincy Lilio is clutch swinging. Alina Torres, clutch hitter. Haley Lee, power. Um, Sid Sanders, I mean, it's just, the names just keep coming. So did we replace Jocelyn Allen? No. Um, I, it's impossible. But it's going to take more than one person to fill those shoes. And that's really was more the mentality is we need more throughout power throughout the lineup just to try to pick up her numbers because they were so good. Patty, have you made any decisions about defensively who goes where? I looks like Sanders is probably first, but you got a couple catchers that are really good, third, left. Have you decided on things? Um, <laughs> close, but not quite there. I mean, we had outfield tryouts today. We're one day away from leaving, and we're having tryouts. So um, every one of these athletes were told to learn two positions really well, and some have three down very well, which makes them very um, good options for me at any time. So um, they've done a good job of working extra and learning other positions. So um, you think you'll juggle it a little bit yes. early on just to see? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. How do you mention the tough schedule early on? You know, there's 10 ranked opponents, five top 10 opponents, some that you'll have to play twice. What kind of challenges does that pose, but also what kind of competitive advantage does that give you guys down the stretch? I think the competitive advantage is what we're looking for. Is um, I don't know that we get better with run rules. They don't make us better. It's those 2-1 ball games or those tight, hard-fought extra innings. Those, those are when you really – find gold. You find who is clutch. You find who loves those big moments. And it's always been, to me, those close games are where your best memories are. It's where you grow the most as a team. So that's what we're looking for. That's why it was scheduled that way. It's been hard to get people to play us. 
um, so this has been really, um, you know, we're, we're having to go to LSU. We're having to go to Mississippi State to get some of these games, which is part of the problem when, when uh, eventually we move on. I won't have these types of problems, but it's a scheduling nightmare at times. But this is really, this team is really excited about the level of this, this going to be probably one of the top power ranking uh, schedules that we've had in a long time. Patty, I wanted to ask you about uh, Grace, obviously a, a career year for her last year, coming back for a super senior year. Just what have you seen from her during the off season, and, and what do you expect from her? This yeah, um, leader. She was the pretty much unanimous leader for us, and called the captain. Um, she had a minor surgery to fix some impingements, and that worked out very well. So she is all in. Look, this looks great. Um, at shortstop, as usual, hitting the ball hard. I feel I I see her picking up exactly where she left off. Uh, Patty, earlier you, you touched on her, but uh, I mean, what have you? What's really stood out to you about Kirsten Deal uh, that maybe you didn't know, you know, as you're recruiting her and, and through that process? Um, first, I think she came in kind of wide-eyed and as she surrounded herself with Coach Rocha and learned more about actual, you know, pitching and our style and what, what she can be really good at, she really, I think, embraced that, tried to get better with it. I think Nicole May and Jordy and some of these veterans have really helped her as well going forward. So she's she can, uh, she's, she's crafty. She moves the ball, she changed speeds, and she's tough. She's tough to face. And uh, she's really improved on her defense a lot. And that's something that um, I know you can look around at all of our lefty pitchers and how great they were, but they were all really good fielders. It's hard to be a left-handed pitcher in softball when someone's trying to bunt on you and you got to spin around. And, She's done a really, really good job with that. So uh, I just found her to really uh, mature as we went forward. How do you, uh, Alex, um, she threw a ton at Michigan, a lot of innings. Um, she's not going to have to do that here. What's the balance in you know, keeping her? She was obviously every game practicing yeah. for them. And now how, how does that balance work when you go from such a load to where she is now? I think she's thrilled. I, I do. I think she's thrilled. I, I, when you throw somebody that much and you lean on them that hard, they lose effectiveness, but you injure, they get hurt. And I think Alex loves the idea of going out and being fresh every time she's on the mound. And I think all of our pitchers are going to feel that. Um, they're all that good. We don't have to rely on one. The days of Hopefully the days of Paige Parker and leaning on Paige Parker is over forever for this program because I hit a point where I was so uncomfortable with what we were doing uh, with her physically that I promised myself we were never going to do that again. So um, these four pitchers are going to be able to hand the ball off. And I mean, we could go starter, middle, reliever, and closer. There's all kinds of different things we can do here um, that will be very effective. When you do that, your opponent has to prepare for three different looks, and it's tough. It's tough to prepare that way. So um, I'm excited about our depth in the circle. You mentioned the pitching staff being acclimated. What's that process like for... Sydney, Haley, Flores coming in and, and not having in, in this lineup, there's no nailed on first base if you have to compete for that spot every single day. You have to learn another. So what, what's that like for them coming in? It's new because they've always been like the superstars on their team. And um, I think some of them um, were hitting more than playing defense. So they've been working really hard defensively. Our upperclassmen have, have tried to bring them in the fold and get them to work at the speed and the level and the reactions and decision making. So just, I mean, even just before I walked in here, we're pressing them in decision making and situational, what do you do here, what do you do there? And there's just still a lot of questions that are being asked because it's a different level of them having to think about what they would do. Um, so I think they'll tell you that they're learning about the game a lot and they're getting, um, 
they're, they're excited about these opportunities of, of making the right decision and making that big play on defense. They've just always been known as hitters. But now um, here you gotta, you got to be good on both sides of the ball. Patty, what's the key to keeping the motivation level so high, keeping them hungry, making sure they don't get too uh, uh, com uh, complacent? I think that's just their expectations of um, of how they understand that they're good. They know they're good. So um, I think they want to be more than good. I think they want to be great. Again, we don't talk about winning, like winning it all or things like that. It's just more of when you put all them together, there's power. You can feel it. It is a very powerful feeling of confidence, athleticism, um, and I think they're a team that wants to be known like that, maybe make history. I mean, how many teams have won it back to back to back? Again, we don't talk about it for good reason, but they know, they know it. They know what's in front, and they just, they just want to be known as the best, and that expectation is always there throughout practice. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. We've gotten this far and we haven't asked about Chiara yet. Um, you know, arguably the best individual player in the entire country. What what do you expect of her this year? And obviously you mentioned you don't replace Johnson, but I'm sure a lot sort of what falls to her uh, and a lot of expectations. What do you expect from her this year? I guess I didn't practice them hard enough if they're just having a good old time. Uh, I just, I don't want Tiari to, to chase anything that she's done in the past and just, you know, not feel, no one here should ever feel like they need to carry us. We, are, we do not need to be carried by anyone. I just want her to be consistent in how she plays the game. And I have felt that. I have not, I've had a couple questions in the way of, does does Tiari need to be the next Jocelyn Allo? No, no, no. No one needs to change. They're good right where they're at. So I think consistency, and I think you're going to see a little more vocal leadership from Tiari. I think she stepped into that space a little bit more this year. And you've always had the ability, because when you've gotten to win, this team always slugs. But you've won games still playing small ball or stealing a bag or, you know, you still have that capability? We do, absolutely. Um, you know, in Oklahoma, when you have the wind blowing in and you're trying to hit the ball out, it turns into routine fly ball. So angle down and runs, hit and runs, um, squeezes, we practice it all. Everybody, even, I mean, our best hitters practice their short game because the element of surprise creates momentum, which is hard to, for another team to come um, back from. So, yeah, we, we, we practice it all, all of them. Patty, you talked about her earlier, but Kenzie Hansen, I mean, it was pretty obvious that she was laboring last year. Just mm -hmm. what were the conversations with her and getting her kind of back on track for what looks to be like a bounce back year? Yeah, none, really. I, I just, she went through the summer, worked with USA Softball. I know she was still hurting. So I just wanted to give her rest, and she's another one that doesn't want to sit. She wants to get moving, but um, they took some measures to help her knees feel better. I know JT has done some things with her setup behind home plate that might help with her knee issues as well. So um, I think she's just, she's hungry. She felt like she let down the team last year some. Um, just because of her injuries and unable to play as much as she wanted to. It affected her offense, for sure. But she's crushing the ball. She's right back to who she was um, the year before. So I, there's not a lot of talk for her. And she knows. I mean, she, she doesn't need to listen to me. <laughs> how much do you anticipate losing Jolie at the plate and what have you seen from her in that, uh, that regard? Yeah, I think um, Jordy is still working on the balance of it, but in the fall, she's got just she's just got power. I mean, she can miss hit something and hit it really hard. So I I think it's an option for us to keep her in the game if we choose to. 
Again, there's so many options, but she definitely can help us on the field. Are you typing while I'm talking? What, and looking at me like that? That's incredible. <laughs> I've never seen somebody do, I just thought you were like twiddling your finger. <laughs> I'm like, what, you don't like my answer? But you're actually. typing what you said so I can find it. It's good. It's just, it is, I'm seeing that talent. It's just magical. Like you're just looking at me like this and your fingers are just, oh, I'm sorry. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> Yes, Jordy. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get her in there. We're gonna get her swinging, and I think she's gonna be a happier athlete. Besides getting, you know, get her off the mound and get her involved in other places. She runs really well too. I can bring her in to run for anybody at any time as well. So. Sorry, we we've asked you this question in the past, but the state of Oklahoma, just the state of softball in Oklahoma. We look at Oklahoma State, how good they're doing. We look at Roger State. A lot of talent at Division II and JUCOs. What does it say about this state in particular and the passion softball has really gained over the past three, four, five years? Yeah, it's been incredible. Uh, I was at the um, coaches convention and we were being honored as a coaching staff with some of the other Oklahoma, state of Oklahoma coaching staffs who got national coaching staff of the year. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's happening. It was. It was um, Phil McSpadden and Roger Stay. I mean, it was all of us, pretty much. So it was um, quite an honor to see that happen as they, we were sweeping all the awards. Um, it says, says a lot. I think we all are prideful of who we represent, not just our universities, but the state. And you can see it. There's good coaches developing players, doing a good job. Kyle, I want to touch back on Grace again. We talked about surgery that she had on, on, on her arm. Just uh, how was she? How, how was she recover, recover from from that? And just mm -hmm. what, how, what is she just focused on in that recovery? And, and yeah, uh, um, load management, so to speak. So she came back, and we kind of slowly gave her like today. You get ten throws at thirty feet, and just slowly working her forward. Um, the last few days was the first time I've seen her with um, go all out. She wasn't stopping. There was no, okay, stop, no more throws. I mean, we were working relays. Everything looks right back to where it was. So she's all there. She's all in. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, guys.